On this world of ours, we take a lot of celestial things for granted. For example, the fact that when there are no clouds in the sky, the sky is blue. We have the moon and the sun, which are both about the size of a pea when held at arm's length. These things are all very predictable, but what if you were standing on a different planet, or even a different moon? How would the sky appear then? Let's start at the beginning. This is Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. With no atmosphere and no moon, at night you'd see the whole Milky Way in pristine detail. Venus, the Earth and even our Moon would also be very bright in the sky. During the day, on the other hand, the Sun is the centerpiece of the sky. It can sometimes appear over 3.2 times bigger in the sky than on Earth and over 10 times brighter. Mercury is in fact very dark grey, but because of the brightness of the Sun, it appears to us like it's white. What about Mars? How does it compare to us? Well, we have a planet that from the surface appears relatively Earth-like. There is an atmosphere, and the Sun appears about 5 eighths the size on Earth, which produces the equivalent brightness of a slightly cloudy afternoon here. During the day, the sky is orange to scarlet in colour, and sunsets and sunrises produce these blues and purples. It's quite the opposite of Earth. And during the night, stars are visible in the sky, as well as both of Mars's moons, which appear quite small. Moving on to the outer solar system now, things are going to get even more spectacular. Now, these planets don't have solid surfaces to land on, which means we're going to look from their moon's perspectives. And starting with Jupiter, we're going to land on the surface of its closest big moon, Io. None of Jupiter's moons have anything more than traces of an atmosphere, so the sky of Io itself would appear quite black. The dominant feature of the sky would of course be Jupiter, which would appear a massive 38 times bigger in Io's sky than our moon in our sky. It would also be exceptionally bright compared to our moonlight, even dimly illuminated the moon during its nighttime. Even so, the sun is 27 times dimmer than on Earth, and only a fifth of the size. Another spectacular phenomenon that occurs quite frequently are total solar eclipses viewed from the moon's perspective. The largest four moons of Jupiter, called the Galilean moons, are big enough to totally eclipse the sun, and due to their orbital resonances, three can cast their shadow on Jupiter at the same time. Now, unbelievably, this is a real image captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, demonstrating this point. Already, we are experiencing drastic differences in the skies of objects in our very own solar system. But let's take it one step further and go to the very last planet. Neptune is the very edge of deep space. At certain points of its year, it can be even further away from the Sun than Pluto. And the only thing found further out than Neptune are icy rocks. The Sun is only a 30th of the size in Neptune's sky, and Neptune receives roughly 1,000th of the sunlight Earth does. Our last visit for today will be on Triton, the largest of Neptune's moons. On the horizon, you will see its pale, thin atmosphere illuminated by the Sun. Neptune itself is 16 times bigger in the sky of Triton than how our moon would appear, but is 250 times dimmer. For us, the Sun is crucial for survival. On Triton, the temperature is minus 230 degrees centigrade, far too cold for us to survive. But to me, it's hugely interesting to know how different skies can look, even within our own solar system. I've only scratched the surface today of different views from different planets, or moons, comets, or even asteroids. Each have their unique stories to tell, stories which we ourselves can discover.